Peace be upon you, brothers and sisters. This is Said Mirza from withinourreason.com. And in today's uh, video, I wanted to look at chapter 39 of the Quran. And um, what we're going to be doing is we're going to go over this uh, chapter by going to reader.quranite.com. So I encourage you to read along with me. I put a link in the drop down box below. Uh, this is Brother Gain's translation The Quran, a complete revelation. So let's begin. In the name of God, the Almighty, the Merciful, I seek refuge in God from Satan, the Accursed. Chapter 39 The revelation of the writ is from God, the exalted in might, the wise. Now, the word writ, uh, which in Arabic is Al-Kitab, my understanding is that this is the Muqattat portion of the Quran. Uh, this is the machine code, which has been explained by the Quran. So the Al-Kitab is uh, in a format that is not understandable to us. Alif Lam Mim, Alif Lam Mim Suad. These are all the uh, symbols, the ayat, the verses of the Al-Kitab. But their exposition is what the Quran is about. We send down to thee the writ with the truth. So serve thou God sincere to human doctrine. So, service to God, worship of God, this is the central uh, theme that uh, this writ is, uh, is based upon, that uh, this is the truth, that uh, we are to serve God alone, and we are to be sincere to Him in our doctrine, or usually it's translated as religion, but that's missing the point. Doctrine is something, a foundational basis upon which you uh, build your life, establish your principles. So our doctrine is that we serve God alone and we are sincere to Him. Does not the sincere doctrine belong to God and those who take allies besides Him? We only serve them that they may, might bring us near to God in proximity. God will judge between them concerning that wherein they differ. God guides not him who is a liar and an ingrate. So you have the ad al-Khalis, the pure doctrine, which uh, is that worship of God alone and those who take allies besides him uh, we shall see that specifically here it's meaning uh, taking Jesus Christ as one's Lord and Savior but we can extend that to uh, any sort of religionist who uh, takes intercessors as in the case of Muslims they take Muhammad as an intercessor uh, that he will save them on the day of judgment that is also taking an ally besides God and the reason for that is that they say that uh, by worshipping them or by calling upon them, uh, we they are uh, bringing them near to God in proximity. Uh, but again, we shall see that this uh, was not the case. Uh, uh, God's doctrine is pure and we are to worship God alone. And uh, God uh, is near to us. He responds to us. There is no need of intercessors. God will judge between them concerning that wherein they differ. We shall see at the end of the surah that God will judge between them uh, and what the judgment will be. God guides not him who is a liar and an ingrate. So he's, this person is a liar because they are associating with God partners and uh, that's a falsehood. And an ingrate, uh, he is uh, ungrateful uh, for the favors of God, does not wish to thank God directly or appreciate the bounties he has given him. He wants to... Uh, thank these uh, allies besides God for those um, for the graciousness of God had God willed to take a son he would have chosen from what he created what he willed glory be to him he is God the one the vanquishing so God is beyond uh, such concepts and and uh, does not behoove him to take a son we read somewhere else in the Quran uh, that uh, how can he have a son when he has no consort, no companion, no wife? Moving on, this is verse 5. He created the heavens and the earth in truth. He wraps the night over the day, and he wraps the day over the night. And he made subject the sun and the moon, each running for a stated term. Is he not the exalted in might, the forgiver? Now, this word uh, that Brother Gans is translating in truth, Bilhaqqi, uh, this is uh, usually used uh, in opposition to Batil, which means uh, vanity or falsehood. So, the idea is that God did not create the heavens and the earth in play and diversion. He did not create the heavens and the earth except with a purpose. And the purpose is to test man, uh, to see who of us uh, is uh, the foremost in deeds, good deeds, 
and uh, then he will reward on the day of judgment. That's the point of creating the heavens and the earth. Now, I keep saying this, the Quran, if you read it, you will notice that there is a usage, there's usage of pairs in the Quran quite a bit. Uh, this is something that uh, the Quran points towards, that the creation of the heavens and the earth and in ourselves, there are pairs and that points towards an intelligent creator. So here we have the night and the day. These are the pairs and the sun and the moon. This is another pair. And we have the two attributes of God, might, might in, exalted in might and forgiver. That's a pair as well. He created you from one soul, then he made from it its mate, and he sent down for you of the cattle eight pairs. He creates you in the wombs of your mother's creation after creation in three darknesses. That is God, your Lord. To him belongs the dominion. There is no God save he. How then are you diverted? How then are you diverted? So, God created us from one soul. Um, and uh, this seems kind of uh, confusing because it says he created you from one soul, then he made from it its mate. Uh, but you have to understand that there was, uh, uh, before this uh, creation, there was another creation earlier uh, when we were all in the garden and we ate from the tree. And uh, that is alluded to in, in other places in the Quran. Uh, God willing, I'll discuss that some in some other video. So this is what is being referred to, that we were created from one soul. This was... Um, a development that happened before our existence on the life of this earth. So this is the second creation. And uh, he sent down for you of the cattle eight pairs. Now, my study of the Quran, I can see that the cattle, um, they are treated uh, in a manner that is, uh, is shown to be that they are more intelligent uh, and they are closer um, to the cognitive development and this is why there is the requirement for the cattle that they have to be sacrificed in a certain manner uh, whereas for other animals you can eat them uh, as you wish uh, because they are of a higher um, uh, development higher being um, than the rest of the creatures uh, obviously man is is a, is much higher than them but uh, the cattle these eight pairs um, in which you have the uh, the illusion of this in some other place in the Quran, uh, the eight pairs of the cattle. But anyway, uh, that's kind of an aside here. Uh, let's go back to, he creates you in the wombs of your mother's creation after creation in three darknesses. So creation after creation, there are different stages in the development of the embryo and three darknesses. My understanding is that this is referring to the uh, the obviously the, uh, the, the womb and then the uterus and then the stomach this is the three darknesses so this is god he he, is, he creates and those whom they call upon they create nothing this is really the crux of the matter if you deny god is free from need of you and he is not pleased for his servants with denial and if you are grateful he is pleased therewith for you and no bear bears the burden of another then to your Lord is your return, and he will inform you of what you did. He knows what is in the breasts. So our denial, God does not affect God. God is free from mankind, uh, and that mankind is in need of God. That's also a central theme of the Quran. And, uh, but he is not pleased or he is not accepting uh, that his servants uh, deny him. And if uh, we accept him, we believe in him, if we are grateful to him, um, then he is accepting of that. And when affliction touches man, he calls to his Lord, turning to him. Then when he confers upon him grace from him, he forgets that for which he called to him before and makes equals to God to lead astray from his path. Say thou, enjoy thou thy denial a little, thou art of the companions of the fire. So this, this theme of affliction, of, of when, when harm touches a man, when evil touches a man, uh, then he calls to his Lord and uh, turns to him in repentance and asks forgiveness and uh, asks for his help. And then when God uh, delivers him, he uh, takes away that evil from him. Uh, then he forgets uh, God and 
makes equals to God. Um, we shall see that this uh, sentence is replayed in a different manner later on, where it's saying that man uh, says that if if good touches him, he says that this is because of my own efforts, this is because of what I have done. And this is also setting up an equal to God, your own ego, thinking that you are uh, somehow uh, the one who can remove the evil from yourself, when in reality it's God who does this. If he who is humbly obedient in the watches of the night, submitting and standing, fearing the hereafter and hoping for the mercy of his Lord, say thou, are they equal, those who know and those who know not, there take heed, but those of insight. Now this Amman, if he who is, we, this, this is setting up, uh, we shall see that this, uh, uh, this, uh, this sentence, uh, if, uh, we're going to see the different juxtapositions of the one who is humbly obedient, uh, who knows, and the one who is the disobedient, who does not know. We're going to see that this is going to be playing into the rest of the chapter here. Um, but I just want to point this out because this is important. This is kind of a, um, if you want, it's, it's, it's kind of a going to be juxtapositioning these two people the one who is a believer and the one who is a disbeliever and then we shall see at the conclusion how uh, the results of the uh, those who believe and those who disbelieve how they um, ultimately where they end up um, but this is the quality of this who is humbly obedient he is submitting and standing uh, and in Arabic is sajidan uh, waqaiman which uh, if you want to translate it in a traditional manner, it would be prostrating and standing. Um, regardless, it's someone who is devoutly dutiful. Uh, in the watch of the night, he is worshipping God. And he is fearing the hereafter and asking God for his mercy. Say thou, O my servants who heed warning, be in prudent fear of your Lord. For those who do good in the world is good, and God's earth is spacious. The patient will but be paid the rewards without reckoning. Say thou, I have been commanded to serve God, sincere to him doctrine, and I have been commanded to be the first of those submitting. Say thou, I fear if I should disobey, my Lord, the punishment of a tremendous day. Say thou, God do I serve, sincere to him in my doctrine. Now you shall see that this part, uh, you know, that I have been commanded to serve God, and uh, I, God, I serve, being sincere to him doctrine. This has already been uh, in the opening, we had this. This was the revelation that was coming down to Muhammad uh, that uh, serve God, being sincere to him in doctrine, and uh, that uh, sincere worship belongs to God alone. So this is, now Muhammad is being told to say this aloud. Continuing on, this is verse 15. So serve what you will besides him, say thou. The losers will be those who lose themselves and their families on the day of resurrection. Is that not the clear loss? And we shall see at the end of the surah that this uh, has come to pass. Uh, they will lose all the people who are the losers. Because they served other th deities, other allies, uh, and they expected their intercession uh, instead of worshipping God alone and fearing him and looking for his mercy. They will have above them canopies of the fire and beneath them canopies. By that does God put his fervents in dread. O my servants, be in prudent fear of me. And those who avoid idols, lest they serve them and turn to God, for them are glad tidings. So give thou glad tidings to the servants, to my servants. Those who hear the word and follow the best thereof, those are they whom God has guided, and it is they who are those possessed of insight. Uh, so this uh, idea of uh, avoiding idols, uh, which in Arabic is ta'ut, this is also meaning uh, the forces of evil. Um, and if you know anything about the tyranny we are currently living in, uh, the forces of evil are uh, um, are at their peak. They are literally everything is demonic around us at the moment, uh, from you know entertainment to to uh, relationships to food. Everything is uh, at the end at the end of the day it is based on materialism, which is uh, the core essence of of Tahu, this false gods this false god of, of uh, um, uh, big big brother, big government, and materialism, and consumerism, and technology. 
Okay, so like I mentioned earlier, you know, that set up that uh, juxtaposition where it said, if he who is only obedient the watch of the night, submitting and standing, fearing the hereafter and hoping for the mercy of his Lord, this person is now being compared here uh, in verse 19, is then he upon whom the word of punishment has become binding? Art thou then to rescue him who is in the fire? So the person who was devoutly obedient, uh, this is being um, compared with the person upon whom the word of punishment has become binding. Now, what does that mean? The word of punishment has become binding. Um, if you have watched my last, well, I think not my last video, I'll put a link in the drop down box below, but a video uh, in which I, the whole theme of the chapter was that, uh, that this is a proof for the believers that uh, those who uh, disbelief in the proofs of God. They will not believe. And uh, this is the word of punishment becoming binding upon them. That those people who reject God's proofs uh, and make a mockery of them, their hearts are sealed. And so uh, then they are not guided. You know, and we read this in the beginning of chapter 2. It says, uh, it is the same to them whether you warn them, do not warn them, they do not believe. So the, this punishment has become binding upon them. And they are literally in the fire. They are, this is their destiny. There's no changing it. This is their, so it's being said, can you, uh, Muhammad, are you then able to rescue them, him who is in the fire? Obviously you cannot. This is their fate is sealed. This is what it's referring to. But those who are in prudent fear of their Lord, they have high chambers above which are high chambers built, beneath which rivers flow. The promise of God, God will not break the appointment. So this is the promise of God, and we shall see its significance at the end of this chapter, uh, where the people, when they enter the garden, they will say that God has fulfilled his promise. So this is the promise of God, that those who are in prudent fear of the Lord, they have high chambers above which are high chambers built, and beneath which rivers flow. Dost thou not see that God sent down from the sky water, and inserted as springs in the earth? Then he brings forth a crop differing in its hues, then it withers, and thou seest it turn to yellow. Then he makes a debris, and that is a reminder for men of understanding. So, you know, this is pretty self-evident uh, that we see the effects of the mercy of God, the rain when it comes down on how vegetation springs forth, and also the springs in the earth. This is how, you know, everyone knows this is how um, we get food to eat. Um, and what's interesting here is that when the water comes down and these uh, all these vegetables all these uh, this flowering this these uh, this vegetation it springs forth it has so many colors right different colors green yellow red but when it when it withers it's all one color yellow and then god makes a chaff he makes a debris and that's the end of it so this is a reminder because this is what uh, l the life is it's uh, it's a brief uh, period of growth and then after that it's decay and then uh, and then it's finished that's it so this is a reminder for us that we should not be um, we shouldn't be too invested in this life uh, because uh, everything will come to nothing as it said in the Quran whatever is on it will perish but the face of your Lord will remain abiding in majesty and honor Verse 23, sorry, verse 22. So again, that comparison between the believer and disbeliever, again, we have the same thing, Afaman. Is then he whose breast God has expanded to submission so that he follows light from his Lord, is he like him whose breast God has not expanded? Then woe to those whose hearts are hardened against the remembrance of God. Those are in manifest error. So, this is the difference between a believer and a disbeliever. That a believer, he follows the light from his Lord, which is the Quran. And though the disbeliever, his heart is hardened against the remembrance of God. Now, I just want you to, you to think about this a little bit because um, Muslims have this understanding that as long as you uh, say, you know, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, uh, you're, you're set. But really, is this what it's saying? It's saying, no, it's saying submission to God and following God's light uh, versus someone whose heart is hardened against the remembrance of God. They don't remember God. So this is the, these are the nuances that need to be brought out, that if you're not remembering God, if you're not submitting uh, to his commands in the book, uh, then you can say whatever you want to say about yourself. But at the end of the day, that's not the person who will be saved. 
verse 23. God has sent down the best narration, a writ of paired comparison, whereat shiver the skins of those who fear their Lord, then their skins and their hearts soften to the remembrance of God. That is the guidance of God, wherewith he guides whom he wills, and whom God sends astray, for him there is no guide. Okay, so here you have the the, the kitab, uh, a writ, which Brother again is translating, of paired comparison. What was the comp comparison? The comparison was that I'm just telling you, um, you know, the word afaman is being used, uh, where it's comparing uh, the believer and the disbeliever. Uh, but on, on a more abstract level, uh, on a more Quranic level, if you look at the Quran itself, uh, the Quran is based upon two certain um, ideas the the punishment of have uh, hell and the pleasures of heaven and um, this is and it and it calls the messenger as a deliverer of good news and a warner so those uh, who when you read the verses about the punishments of hell uh, then your heart your skins shiver at the fear of your lord but when you he read about the pleasures of, of the heaven and god's mercy then your skins and your hearts soften to the remembrance of god this is what it's about that is the guidance of god wherewith he guides whom he wills and whom god sends astray for him there is no guide no guide so the quran is the thing that guides not islam not christianity not judaism uh, not the hadith not following your father's footsteps that's not guidance this is the guidance so again, we have the juxtaposition between a believer and a disbeliever. Is then he who has no prudent fear but his face against the evil of the punishment on the day of resurrection. And it will be said to the wrongdoers, taste what you earned. So we had before this the, uh, the statement, is then he whose breast God has expanded to submission so that he follows light from his Lord. Now this person is being compared again with the person who is a disbeliever. And then on the day of judgment, his only guard will be his face from the fire. This is what it's being uh, talked about here. And it will be said to the wrongdoers, taste what you earned. Those before them denied and the punishment came upon them whence they perceived not. Obviously, we have in the Quran examples of uh, Pharaoh and, and uh, the people of no Noah and, uh, you know, Lut and Shoaib and all these messengers and prophets who came with uh, the clear signs and uh, the people denied them. And they were punishment for they were punished for that. And God let them taste disgrace in the life of this world, but the punishment of the hereafter is greater had they but known. And we have struck for mankind in this Quran every similitude that they might take heed. An Arabic recitation free of deviation that they might be in prudent fear. So we're going to see what the similitude, well, there's many similitudes in the Quran, but right after this statement, we see a, a similitude being struck. So we need to pay attention to that so that we might take heed. God has struck a similitude, a man concerning whom are partners quarreling and a man submission to one man. Are they equal in likeness? Praise belongs to God. The truth is most of them know not. What do they not know? They do not know that praise belongs to God alone, that He is the Master. And uh, just as an aside, um, if you, because obviously I follow, uh, I, I, I live in a Muslim household, I was brought and raised up in a Muslim household, so um, I do hear a lot of you know Muslim sheikhs and stuff talk about this and that. Uh, and I've noticed that a lot of people, they take this sheikh as an authority or that sheikh as an authority, and uh, they frequently change um, the who which sheikh they're following based upon their own lifestyle and choices. As in, you know, a modern Muslim might take uh, Ramdi, for instance, as as his sheikh, but a more extremist would uh, take uh, Tahir al-Ghadwi as his sheikh. So, because these are all sheikhs who are fitting certain lifestyle choices, right? Uh, but they are quarreling amongst each other because they have their own um, rulings, fatwas, and. Um, usually sometimes it's referred to as fatwa shopping because people, if they don't like what one sheikh is saying about interest, they might go and look for some other uh, loophole, some other sheikh who um, is is okay with, with, you know, riba. All that to say that this is what is being talked about here, that uh, this man, he has partners, he is looking to these men for guidance, for rulings. Uh, as in the Quran, it says that uh, are they are their partners are, the, are those the ones who set down the rulings, 
No, it's God who set down the rulings, right? It's in the Quran. So a man submission to one man, as in a man in submission to the guidance from God alone, uh, he is not equal to someone who is uh, following many different partners who are quarreling with each other. Verse 30, Thou wilt die and they will die. Then on the day of resurrection before your Lord will you dispute. And we shall see. Uh, these All these words uh, that are being talked about, all, the, all these things that have been talked about at the end of the surah, we shall see their conclusion. This will actually happen. Okay, God will judge between his servants and they will quarrel um, the people who uh, denied they will quarrel before you know they're thrown into fire and in the fire they will be quarreling and the those people who um, upon whom God had mercy uh, God will fulfill his promise to them they will enter paradise and they will thank God for uh, guiding them and, and fulfilling his promise so this is not just you know things that are being talked about uh, that we shall see this is in the Quran itself the conclusion of the matter is, is, is given to us so everything has been laid down and the words of God do not change Okay, verse 32. And who is more unjust than he who lies against God and denies the truth when it comes to him? Is then there not in Gehenna a home for the false claimers of guidance? So who is more unjust than he who lies against God? This is the lies of the Christians uh, that uh, God has raised up a son. He, he has taken a son and uh, denies the truth. Now this is someone, uh, this per fits perfectly with the religionist concept where he denies the truth uh, when, when the Quran is given to him and shown to him to be complete and has everything required for a man uh, to attain God's pleasure, uh, he denies it and he says, no, this is not complete. I have my own guidance and uh, this is what is required. And uh, this uh, Kafirin, which Brother Gerens is translating as false claimers of guidance, I will refer you to his work on that subject uh, because uh, it, it requires a little bit of... Uh, uh, measured understanding, uh, measured thought, uh, but but the gist of it is that the al kafirun are those who uh, are the religionists. They are uh, claiming guidance and they're saying that we are following guidance when in reality they are uh, they are spurning guidance. They are not ready to accept guidance. And a good example of that is uh, Iblis, uh, who is. The, uh, uh, who is the enemy of mankind uh, he when God said to him submit he refused and uh, even though he was in the exalted assembly but he wasn't of the al kafirun he was hiding uh, his true colors uh, he was a false claimer of guidance and said in the Quran that he was I mean al kafirun he was of the al kafirun and uh, in his chief attribute uh, that brought about his downfall was arrogance. Verse 33, And whoso comes with the truth and confirms it, it is they who are those of prudent fear. So this is the coming with the truth is, is Muhammad, the messenger of God, and confirmation of this truth is the uh, the believers, they are confirming that this is the truth. For them is what they will with their Lord, that is the reward of the doers of good that God might remove from them the worst of what they did and remove, reward them with their reward for the best of what they did. Remember that where it said that uh, follow the best of what God has revealed. So here they are being rewarded for the best of what they did. So best upon best. Is then God not sufficient for his servant and they would put thee in dread of those other than him and whom God sends astray for him there is no guide. So God alone is our ally and protector. And uh, just as an aside, this is not something that is just uh, a show of saying. Mm, the believers, they do put their trust in God and uh, they reject the tyranny of the state. They reject the vaccines. They reject the, uh, the impositions of the tyrannical system that we are currently living in. And uh, they look to God for provision. And... Uh, Ultimately, they realize that God alone has power over everything. This, this tyrannical system has no power. It's just an illusion of power. And whom God guides for him, there is none to lead astray. Is then God not exalted in might and able to requite? Of course, he is. 
And if thou askest them who created the heavens and the earth, they will say, God, say thou, have you considered to what you call other than God? If God wills affliction for me, are they removers of his affliction? Or if he wills mercy for me, are they withholders of his mercy? Say thou, God is sufficient for him, for me. In him place their trust, those who would place their trust aright. Now, obviously, we're beyond this uh, in in terms of the, the, the degeneracy that we're living in that people uh, they're so foolish to the point where they deny God's existence if you ask them who created the heavens and the earth they will say nothing they created themselves or they were always there um, or, or you know the big bang so we're beyond this de 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 this degeneracy but obviously if you are if you ever encounter one of those Mormon um, you know pushers of religion uh, you can ask them this question uh, the, who created the heavens and the earth they will say God and then say okay if God created the heavens and the earth then why do you call to Jesus Christ and, and uh, can they remove any affliction from you uh, that's a valid uh, investigation um, point anyway moving on verse 39 say thou O my people work according to your poor power I am working and you will come to know to whom comes their punishment that disgraces him and upon whom there descends a lasting punishment we send down upon thee the writ for mankind with the truth and whoso is guided it is for his soul and whoso strays he but strays against it and thou art not a guardian over them God takes the souls at the time of their death and that which has not died in its sleep. Then he keeps that for which he has ordained death and sends down the other to a state in term. In that are proofs for people who reflect. If they have taken intercessors besides God, say thou, even though they have power, they have not power over anything, but they do not reason. Say thou, Unto God belongs intercession altogether. His is the dominion of the heavens and the earth. Then to him will you be returned. So Muhammad does not have any right, a power to intercede. And Jesus has no power to intercede. And actually both of these messengers of God, they are in the Quran as saying on the day of judgment. Muhammad will say, Oh my Lord, my people deserted this Quran, abandoned this Quran, or took this Quran as uh, a thing to be abandoned. You can look up any translation. And... Uh, Jesus is said, uh, he will say in the Quran in, in, on the day of judgment that uh, if thou punish them, they are your servants. And if thou have mercy upon them, then thou art the merciful. This is the extent of the intercession of these two messengers of God upon which both Muslims and Christians have such high hopes. And when God alone is remembered, the hearts of those who believe not in the hereafter shrink with aversion. But when those besides him are remembered, then they rejoice. Now you can see the, the truth of this statement when you talk to the Muslims and you say, Okay, we, la ilaha illallah. Yeah, we believe in God, that uh, there is no God but God. Uh, they will have a problem with this statement. They'll say, no, you have to say, uh, there is no God but God and messenger and Muhammad is the messenger of God so this is the part where the hearts of those who believe not in the hereafter they shrink with aversion but when those besides him are remembered then they rejoice say thou O God the creator of the heavens and the earth the knower of the unseen and the seen thou wilt judge between thy servants concerning that wherein they differed and we shall see that God will judge between the servants on what they differed at the end of this uh, surah and were those who do wrong to possess all that is in the earth and the like of it with it, they would seek to ransom themselves thereby from the evil of the punishment on the day of resurrection. And there will appear to them from God that on which they had not reckoned. And there will appear to them the evil deeds they earned, and there will surround them that whereat they mocked. So... I think it's worthwhile to think about this life, about the consequences of our evil deeds in this life, because the, the, the evils that we have earned, we do taste them in this life as well. Uh, so it's not that, you know, all these evils that any, anyone is accumulating, uh, you know, Mr. Biden or Mr. Fauci or um, whoever, um, it's not that they won't, they're not tasting the, these evils. They are tasting these evils. Um, and there's many forms of, of this, uh, of how they taste the evils. Uh, obviously, a guilty conscience is one uh, form. Uh, you have soldiers going and killing women and children in Iraq and Afghanistan, coming back with PTSD and unable to live their lives. This is all a consequence of, of what their hands earned. So this is the evil that they themselves, you know, created for themselves and they're tasting it. Um, if you look at... Uh, 
fornication, you have STDs, um, gluttony, you have all sorts of problems with that as well. Um, any any sort of, you know, obviously nicotine uh, addiction, you have the, the possibility of cancer and obviously your lungs uh, collapsing and that sort of great good stuff. Um, drinking, your liver problems. Uh, so all these evils do manifest in this life as well so uh it's this is not to say that you know this is all being stored up on the day of judgment obviously on the day of judgment those evils will come to you know faith that the people who did them they will face the true horrors but in this life you are given a preview so that you might take heed verse 49 and when affliction touches man he calls to us then when we confer upon him favor from us he says i have only been given it according to knowledge the truth is it is a means of denial but most of them know not now i remember i told you um actually i'll just pull that verse up because uh we see this being uh Applied when the verse eight we saw, and when affliction touches man, he calls to his Lord, turning to him. Then when he confers upon him favor from him, he forgets that for which he called to him before, and makes equals to God to lead astray from his path. Say thou, enjoy thou thy denial a little. Thou art of the companions of fire. And then we have the same um, affliction touching man, and this time in verse forty nine says he calls to us. Then when we confer upon him favor from us, he says, I have only been given it according to knowledge. The truth is, it is a trial, a means of denial, but most of them know not. So you here we have this man. He is not. He's he's associating a partner with God in the sense that he's saying that this is because of my own knowledge. That you know, I somehow I I am the one who removed this evil from myself. But actually, the truth is that this is a trial to see whether you will thank God or you will be ungrateful to Him and associate partners with Him. Verse fifty: There had said it those before them, but there availed them that not what they earned, and the evil deeds they earned befell them. And those who do wrong among these, there will befall them the evil deeds of what they have earned, and they will not escape. So this is setting up an example for you, a precedent that this has already happened before. The people before them, when they did the evil deeds, those the evil deeds befell them. And that those people who are doing wrong now, uh, the evil deeds will befall them. This is the law. This is nothing. There's no changing uh, the outcome, right? Verse 52. Know they not that God expands provision for whom he wills and he straightens, and that are proofs for people who believe. Say thou, O my servants who have committed excess against their souls, despair not of the mercy of God. God forgives transgressions altogether. He is the forgiving, the merciful. And turn in repentance to your Lord and submit to him before there comes to you the punishment. Then will you not be helped. And follow the best of what is sent down to you from your Lord before the punishment comes upon you unexpectedly when you perceive not. Lest the soul say, O oh, my regret over what I neglected in what was due to God and what was of those who derived. What was due to God? Worship, turning to Him in repentance, being grateful to Him. Uh, this is all the requirement that was due to God. Or it say, Had God guided me, I would have been among those of prudent fear. Now, this obviously is the, the theme that, you know, God, God guides and He misguides. He has sent down the Quran. And we shall see that this is being answered in the next couple of verses. That this 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 lamentation, had God guided me, I would have been among those of prudent fear. Yeah, okay, we'll see. Anyway, verse fifty-eight. Or it say when it sees the punishment, would that I had returned, then I might be of the doers of good. Um, just to give you a little bit of backstory here, this this whole idea that if I would have returned, I would be among the doers of good. This is addressed somewhere else in the Quran where God says that even if they were to return, they would go back to what they were doing. Uh, and God knows, we do not know, but this is God. what God is saying, that this is what would happen even if they were to return. But on, um, I guess, a little bit more concrete level, uh, it says in this surah, in this chapter, that God uh, takes the souls at the time of their death, and for those who he does not take, he takes their souls uh, when they're sleeping, and then he returns it to them. So every day is every day is a resurrection, and every night is a death, in sort of metaphorical, spiritual, well, not spiritual, but more of a, you know, a, a high level understanding of it so you are being given chances in this life every day 
Okay, so whatever your lifespan is, you've been given a lot of chances to to take heed and to uh, turn back to God and do good deeds, but you never availed them. Now, all of a sudden, after death, uh, you you say, "Okay, I'm gonna be righteous." So now we have in verse fifty nine the answer of that lamentation. Had God guided me, I would have been among those of prudent fear. It says in verse fifty nine, "Verily, my proofs came to thee, but thou didst deny them and wax proud and wast amongst the flaw false claimers of guidance." So here you go, that God's proofs did come to you, but you denied them and you were arrogant. And on the day of resurrection, thou wilt see those who lied against God, their faces blackened, is then they're not in Gehenna, a home for the proud. Now, this lying against God, obviously the Christians do it in the sense that they associate uh, a son with God, but the all religionists do this uh, to varying degrees. Obviously, the Muslims do this because they uh, set up um, the lies uh, that are found in the, the hadiths and uh, they associate them with God. If you know anything about Hadith Qudsi, this is uh, uh, it's considered to be, you know, uh, a revelation from God in the sense that uh, uh, Muhammad is being told certain things and the Muslims take that as, as something that uh, God said. So this is a lie against God. Okay, so now moving on, we have here uh, verse 61 and God will deliver those who were in prudent fear by their attainments evil will not touch them nor will they grieve God is the creator of all things and he is guardian over all things to him belongs the keys of the heavens and the earth and those who deny the proofs of God it is they who are the losers say thou is it other than God you command me to serve O you who are ignorant and it has revealed to thee and to those before thee, if thou ascribe a partnership, thy deeds will be made vain, and thou wilt be among the losers. Nay, but God shalt thou serve, and be thou among the grateful. Serve or worship, but be be grateful to God alone, and do not ascribe a partnership with God. This is this is the deen. This is the doctrine of God. Okay, a big fuss is made about Islam and what Al Islam is, but this is the doctrine of God that you don't ascribe any partnership to God. And they measured God not with the measure due him, and the earth altogether will be his handful on the day of resurrection, and the heavens will be folded up in his right hand. Glory be to him, and exalted is he above that to which they ascribe a partnership. So, this is um, obviously we're getting a glimpse of God's majesty here. And uh, the idols they set up, the comparisons they make with God, they are nothing. And the trumpet will be blown, and whoso is in the heavens and whoso is in the earth will fall down thunderstruck, save whom God wills. Then will it be blown again, and they will be standing looking on. So there will be two blasts. And uh, the first blast, everything will be destroyed. The second blast, everything will be recreated. And the earth will shine with the light of its Lord, and the writ will be set up, and the prophets and the witnesses will be brought, and it will be concluded between them with justice, and they will not be wronged. Now, in this current generation, the believers are the witnesses. I, I hope you get that. So, because Muhammad was the seal of the prophets, and it says in the Quran that uh, that Muhammad uh, be a witness over you, and you be witnesses over mankind. So, this is the beauty of the believers to be witnesses by warning the people around them, uh, so that on a day of judgment you will be called and and uh, told to bear witness. Verse seventy, and every soul will be paid in full for what it did, and he best knows what they do. And those who ignore warning will be driven into Gehenna in companies. When they have come to it, the gates thereof will be opened, and the keepers thereof will say to them, Came there not to you messengers from among you, reciting to you the proofs of your Lord, and warning you of the meeting of this day of yours? They will say, Verily, but the word of punishment is binding upon the false claimers of guidance. And we saw that this was referred to earlier, the word of punishment is binding. Is it, uh, Can you rescue him who is in the fire? Remember that? I'll go back to that. Is then he upon whom the word of punishment has become binding? Are thou then to rescue him who is in the fire? This is verse 19. And here we see that they are now in the fire. The punishment of uh, the word of punishment is now, has now become binding upon them. Uh, because why? Why? Why is it become binding upon them? Because they rejected the proofs of God. Verse 72, it will be said, enter the gates of Gehenna, abiding eternally therein, and evil is the dwelling of the proud. 
And those who are in prudent fear of their Lord will be driven towards the garden in companies. When they have come to it, the gates thereof have been opened, and the keepers thereof will say to them, Peace be upon you, you did well, so enter it, abiding eternally. And they will say, Praise belongs to God, who has fulfilled for us his promise, and made us inherit the earth. We may settle in the garden wheresoever we will, and excellent is the reward of the workers. Remember this promise? This promise was... Uh, in verse 20, But those who are in prudent fear of the Lord, they have high chambers above which are high chambers built beneath which rivers flow. The promise of God. God will not break the appointment. So now they are praising God and thanking Him uh, for fulfilling His promise to them uh, and that they can settle in the garden wheresoever they will. And we finally conclude with verse 75. And thou wilt see the angels surrounding the throne, glorifying with the praise of their Lord. And it will be said, and it will be decided between them with justice. And it will be said, praise belongs to God, the Lord of all creation. So, this is the conclusion of the matter. And by the way, this is as far as the Quran goes at the end, to the, towards the end. If you read the whole of the Quran, you're going to see that this is the end. That it will end with, praise belongs to God, the Lord of all creation. Which is what it began with. The Quran starts with, praise belongs to God, the Lord of all creation. And not only that, you know, in this surah, I was being talked about how uh, you... It said that, you know, God will judge between his servants. There you go. And it will be decided between them with justice. Now, the, just, the, the decision has been made. Everything, everyone is in their proper place. And it will be said, the angels will say, uh, glorifying God, praise belongs to God, the Lord of all creation. So indeed, praise belongs to God, the Lord of all creation. So... Anyway, this is sort of my exposition of this chapter. Um, I encourage you to take a look at it, uh, read it on reader.coronite.com and, um, and see what's being talked about here because what's being talked about here is the conclusion of the matter and that God will judge between his servants and those who follow his guidance and are prudent fear of him and do not associate with him any partners. They will... Uh, enter the garden and those who deny God's proofs or associate partners with him um, or and are arrogant they will enter the fire that is the crux of the matter nothing to do with religions who you belong to which sect uh, or, or it's it's purely based on on actions and morality and uh, right right approach following the best of what God has revealed God willing until next time peace and blessings be upon you